Namaste. My name is Dr. Suhas Kshirsagar. And on behalf of Kerala Ayurveda Academy, I welcome all of you for this health education series. And what we are discussing today is the Ayurvedic approach to effective management of stress. Stress has become a real buzzword where we all feel that people are getting stressed out. They feel there's a lot of pressure which is building up and they feel stress building into their system. And not only this term was coined by Hirsch Sele um, about a couple of decades ago, but the impact what we are realizing is at a nervous system level, at an immune system level, even to all the endocrinological functioning of the physiology, that the physiology really buckles with the pressure what stress does to our system. In the ancient good old days of Ayurveda, Ayurveda has always talked about the vata imbalance. Vata, which is the king of the doshas, it's the air and the space combination which makes air, which is governing every little moving force in the body. And you can correlate the pressure with the understanding of air and vata. So whenever there is a building up of pressure which creates stress leads to a distress. So technically it is a vata imbalance. And this vata imbalance starts disrupting the normal functioning of the physiology. And there are clinical markers how we can understand what stress does to you. But a chronic long-term exposure to a stressful situation can be very fatal. And we have seen that it affects your cerebrovascular functioning, it affects your cardiovascular functioning, it creates immune disorders, it creates a variety of different responses. And the way Ayurveda has looked at this understanding of stress it is not what are the reasons why you get stressed out, but what stress does to you. If a typical Pitta person who is a bit hot, sharp, slightly angry, uh, irritable kind of a person, he will respond into a stressful situation getting even more snappy, getting even more irritable, feeling uh, more angry with the whole situation. A Vata person who is a little bit more anxious, lean and thin by nature, he has a tendency to worry about things. When the pressure builds up, he gets even more anxious. He feels he cannot handle the pressure. He's, he becomes forgetful. It creates a mental fog. It creates almost a degree of shakiness and restlessness in the nervous system, which doesn't allow him to sleep or function or think properly or think clearly. It affects the clarity of the senses and the nervous system. And a Kapha person, who, who is mostly an easy-going, happy-go-lucky kind of a person, whenever they are under stress, it actually feels as if they cannot handle or deal or perform in a given situation, and they go back into their shell, which even makes them a little bit more dull, more heavy, more depressed, sometimes even more lazy with the situation. So uh, what we are discussing today is the situation which creates stress no doubt is important but how your body behaves to that stressful situation will create an impact how your body is going to create an imbalance because of that stressful situation and the most important factor for thousands and thousands of years Ayurveda has talked about is the quality of your mind sattva the mental strength which allows you to regulate itself. One of the qualities of the mind which Ayurveda talks about is regulating itself. There's a wonderful function of the mind which we say chinte vicharya uyam cha dheyam cha sankalpa mevachan. So when we talk about all these five functions where you have to think, you have to ponder, you have to analyze, you have to dissect, you have to create uh, almost an action-oriented resolution where you're going to prepare your mind to carry out an action. So there is a lot of functioning which happens at a mental level. And when we look at a stressful situation, which sometimes 
we feel the pressure which can raise our blood pressure. It can elevate our blood pressure. It can create an increased cardiac output. It will create sweating. It will create pupillary dilatation. It will create more diverse or obstructed blood supply in different situations. It will create an adrenal insufficiency or hyperactivity at an adrenal level. It can create clumping of our platelets which will make our blood a little bit more thick and create either vasoconstriction or vasodilation at some point. And so there is a different response how people will response to typical stressful situation. How do we treat this? How do we manage this? How do we allow people to actually understand that how they need to use some simple Ayurvedic techniques? And there is an acronym which I want to share with all of you and that is called as STAR. S-T-A-R-A. S-T-A-R. STAR. S stands for stop. A stands for, uh, T stands for thinking. S stands for to stop. T stands for think. O, A stands for assess. You have to assess the situation. And R, you have to, you have to respond or let go. When you talk about S-T-A-R, stop, think, assess, and respond. And when any stressful situation is filtered through these four markers, and there are Sanskrit words for all of these four, and what we are doing is instead of instinctively responding to any situation, we have to actually understand that we need to diffuse the pressure. We need to stop, we need to wait, and we need to ponder. And with the, with the impact of time, what we will have, we will have a little bit of more clarity in the situation, in understanding from where the challenge of the situation is or the problem is coming from. We are assessing things. We are looking at the pros and cons of the things before we instinctively try to respond in any way. And then we are trying to actually think it through and then we respond it in a manner where it is not a half hazard or a very instinctive response but we are either letting it go we are diffusing it or we are acting it in a very calm cool and collected manner so when you talk about a stressful situation in life one of the most important thing that we will have to find a spiritual solution to a stressful situation in life many of the pressures that we built uh, we we put on our system is having an impact whatever body will respond if we are living in a stressful relationship, if we are going to a job or a workplace where we don't want to see the face of our boss or we hate to uh, be in a workplace with all our colleagues and everything, or we are having uh, difficulties with our family life, with our children, or we are having a terrible financial mess, all of these situations are going to create an impact in which your body, your physiology is going to crumble and misbehave. So, yoga and Ayurveda are sister sciences. So the Vedantic wisdom about managing stress, about leading an austere life, about looking at the, the benefits and the blessings, what you have in life, having a degree of gratitude about all the goodness that you are blessed with, looking at everything what you can do to the best of your ability, slowing down, curtailing down the pace of life is very, very important, spending time out in nature which is very important because when you look at something which is bigger uh, than your own ego or your own self like you're looking at a beautiful ocean and sunset you are at a green mountain top you you diffuse this pettiness of our life and so many times you have to connect with the elements which are much bigger than yourself we talk about how we process stress how we build our own stress and how we create all these negative emotions there's a wonderful shloka in Bhagavad Gita which actually talks about all the creation of the physical problems. And from an Ayurvedic angle, uh, we talk about the three main reasons for any disease to happen. They are called as Asatma Indriyartha Sanyog, which is an improper contact of our senses with the sensory object. They are overuse, underuse and abuse. Or Pragyaparad, which is a mistaken intellect where you don't have a stable dhi, dhriti and smriti. Dhi stands for intellect, dhriti stands for patience or discipline and smriti stands for the cellular memory, what you create out of it. And then the parinama where many times you are exposed to certain things with, with, without your total control over that. 
and you have to accept that you have to create a little bit of a more flexible resilient nervous system you might be doing everything picture perfect and you are driving with all the rules of driving properly on a freeway and suddenly you are rear-ended there's nothing more you can do about it but just look up stop your car and and deal with that situation you need the stability and the equanimity of your mind to to deal with the situation and quickly shift what is to be needed at that time without allowing your body to feel stressed out so one of the most important thing from an ayurvedic angle is always allowing yourselves to be a little bit more flexible not to be rigid you have to do your best and still expect the rest from the nature that's the best way to process your stress the quotation is bhagavad gita it says dhyayato vishayan pusaha sangasteshu pajayate sangat sanjayate kamah kamat krodho bijayate krodhat bhavati sammoha sammoha smriti vibhrava smriti bhramshat buddhi nasho buddhi nashat pranashyati and this is almost a whole chain reaction or the sequence from where the imbalances of all kinds happen in our life when we are constantly dreaming of sensory pleasures we start collecting all the toys what we like we start fulfilling our sensory desires one by one we get attached to all of these things we start identifying our life with some of these toys what we have this is my house this is my car these are my designer clothes or it creates an almost egoistic identity with what you have and many times when you are dispossessed with something what you call your own you get very angry you get very unhappy with that and it creates a sense of anger which clouds your sensory thinking and rational and your intellect whenever you are covered with this irritability and anger and un unhappy situation in life you don't think straight we say are you crazy are you mad are you not thinking are you not seeing are you not looking at things what what they are happening and these are all things which covered our senses and the moment our senses are covered the moment our intellect is not functioning properly we start making a decision which is not well thought of and that exactly creates another challenge another bigger problem in our life so slowing down looking at the rationale allowing the nature to do its job doing our best and still having the flexibility that you can't really achieve everything all at once and be very very patient and flexible and create a degree of detachment it's a very interesting word because ayurveda is a is a philosophically based medical science and when we talk about this to our patients we always think as if do we have to wear saffron robes and talk to our clients about all these things do we have to send them to church to to learn this information how to manage their stress no when you go to a healer when you go to a physician when you go to a counselor that's exactly how we should educate our clients how to deal with a stressful situation how to diffuse Uh, a marital stress or a challenge or how to look at a challenging situation with your finances and how to change your attitude to look at the problem because stress is a situation in which you have to you have to shift your awareness properly and there is a lot of research which has been conducted on these age old vedantic techniques whether it is meditation whether it is yoga whether it is pranayama using your body um, to do different variety of asanas and postures whether you are doing sense withdrawal whether you are doing fasting whether you are doing all the silent retreats all the different modalities and tools that we have to manage our stress effectively do have their source in the vedic wisdom itself because in that source of knowledge that tradition of knowledge from where ayurveda is a part of actually gives us the little clarity and understanding that how we should look at the bigger picture of life how can we be counting our blessings how can we have positive affirmations to say to ourselves and fill our life with a greater clarity hope joy and abundance forever thank you